Good morning. We're going to be in Ephesians chapter 4. You can find your way there. In the kindness and the sovereignty of God, we have been able to give consideration to this passage for the last several weeks, and it is proven timely. Encouragement to pursue unity to live out of the identity that Christ has already given to us. And this morning, we're going to learn that the head of the church, Jesus, the one that Paul says is the one Lord, the one later in chapter 4 that he says is the head of the body. Paul's going to spend a few moments this morning in a verse highlighting two characteristics of Jesus. And they're going to prove, once again, timely. I'm wondering if you know of Henry VIII, King Henry VIII of England. You probably don't know many good things about him. You may recognize him from a picture. Most people have a general knowledge of this man, but it isn't favorable. The story goes that King Henry VIII used to take strolls around the city, and he had a preferred walking stick that he would use while out on a stroll. The king would uh, replace his clothing, his garments, and would put on the clothes of the common man, and he would walk the city at night. The purpose of this was to inspect the work and to observe the job that his constables were doing. Well, one night, he was in the shadows, in his cloak, with his walking stick, and a constable observed this shadowed figure with what appeared to be a deadly weapon. So the constable pursued, began to approach the figure, who then fled. Pursuit was necessary. They yelled for backup, and a nearby watchman helped, and the two of them tackled the individual arrested him, and placed him in jail. Well, the next morning it was discovered that this individual was King Henry VIII. Quickly, the jail keepers released him. He was reinstated to the palace, and not long after, that constable and watchman were summoned to the palace. By this time, they had heard and were now afraid. What was to become of them? Were they, too, to be now arrested and take his place in jail? Or were they going to be beheaded, says King Henry VIII, after all? Well, fortunately for them, neither of those things happened. King Henry VIII actually uh, uh, commended them for their work, for the diligence, for their effort in doing their job thoroughly, And they were rewarded and given uh, significant riches for their efforts. Now, King Henry VIII was no saint. Yet, in this story, we can appreciate something about him. It's even endearing to know that he had the willingness to get his hands dirty, to, to come out and walk among the commoners and then to hear of his generosity. These are qualities that we appreciate in those who lead us. In fact, we, we've made television shows about this kind of thing. The show Undercover Boss was on the air for about 10 years. Stories of CEOs who willingly give up their position for a period of time, go in disguise, and get a job at the lowest rung of their company. And the cameras follow them along, and they generally learn of various needs within the company, and then they give away and pay medical bills and give raises. And we like this kind of story of the, of the high becoming low, especially for the sake of the little guys. I think one of the reasons that stories like this have an appeal to us is that because this is the story of God. This is the story of Jesus for his church. 
we're going to see this morning in this text that Jesus has the hum- humility and the generosity that we desire. Look with me in Ephesians chapter 4. We'll begin in verse 7. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower regions, the earth? He who descended is the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. Jesus is humble. Paul cites Psalm 68, verse 18. In your Bible, verse 8 may be indented, it may be quoted. This is a reference to Psalm 68. And he uses this verse to demonstrate the generosity of Jesus. He quotes, therefore it says. This is, this is why we know that Jesus is generous. But then immediately quoting that, he gets caught up on something. He gets distracted in verse 9. In your Bible, it may be a parenthesis. This seems tangential to what he wants to communicate, but it's significant. He says, in saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he also descended? Paul's asking the question, well, doesn't this, if we say that Jesus ascended, doesn't that at least imply that he was low? For Paul, the willingness of Jesus to come to earth demonstrates his humility, like uh, the original undercover boss, like the original king among the commoners, Jesus came down to our level. But the Son of God went further than just a rich man dressing like us. The scriptures tell us that he emptied himself. Philippians chapter 2 says, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. What mind is that? That who, in the, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself. Even though he was high, even though he had the equality with God, he didn't cling to it, he let go, he emptied himself, and he took the form of a servant being born in the likeness of men. See, in the beginning, he was with God. He was God. And he set aside willingly his his right to live out of that power. He chose to set aside the glory that was due him. The God that spoke the world with powerful words in Genesis. The whole world was created by his voice. That same God would now need to learn how to talk. The God who had valiantly led the Israelites across the wilderness to the promised land would now need to learn how to to walk. The God who had created a people for his own service, for his own pleasure, for his own glory, would now need to learn how to be obedient to his parents. See, when Jesus descended, it was more than just a mere 20 floors from the CEO's office. It was more than just the castle to the streets. Jesus' descent was from the right hand of the Father down to earth in order to face complete rejection. This is the humility of Jesus. Jesus is humble. When asked to share about himself, when given the opportunity to tell us who he is in his very heart, Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and I am lowly in heart. I am humble. This is who I am in my being. In a book that I would commend to you called Gentle and Lowly, Dane Ortland says this, For all his resplendent glory and dazzling holiness, his supreme uniqueness and his otherness, despite the glory and the exaltation that Jesus had in heaven, no one in human history has ever been more approachable than Jesus Christ. 
There are no prerequisites to come to him. There are no hoops to jump through. Jesus says in his very being that he is lowly, he is humble, he is accessible. He is a humble king. Before he ascended and was exalted, Paul wants us to know that he descended. He is humble. But additionally, he is generous. We appreciate this in people. And Paul assures us that Jesus is generous. Look at verse 7. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Grace given gift. See, Jesus is give, give, give. It, from the depths of his being, what he has, he offers. He says, what is mine is yours. He has made us uh, co-inheritors uh, with him. In his victorious ascension, Jesus gives gifts. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 6, he says, this mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs. Fellow heirs, we partake in the generosity of Jesus. We are members of the same body and we are partakers of the promise. In 2 Corinthians 8, 9, For you know the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor. That is the humility of Jesus, setting aside the riches and the glory of heaven to become poor. Why? So that you, by his poverty, might become rich. That is his generosity. His inheritance is yours. He shares it with us humbly and generously. There is no hesitation or reluctance in Jesus to share what he has. Parents, can you say this of your own children? That when they have a toy, when there's something that you want them to share with another person, even their own sibling, how tight-fisted is that in their sharing? It's generally reluctant. I don't want to. Jesus doesn't have a tight fist. His grip isn't one of tight-fistedness. He has an open hand. He didn't even account, uh, account quality with God something to be grasped. His blessings he gives freely. This is why Paul looks to Psalm 68. If you look at Psalm 68, verse 18, it says, You ascended on high, leading a host of captives in your train, and receiving gifts from men. The image is of a victorious king after a battle collecting the spoils of war unto himself, receiving tribute and praise from men because victory has been won. But this is not Jesus. Paul tweaks and adjusts a word from receiving gifts to giving gifts. Look what he says. He says, therefore, it says, when he ascended. So he's changed the tense from uh, second person to third person. But more significantly, when you, you ascended on high, you led a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men. See, Jesus uh, didn't send people out to win the war and then collect the spoils of victory for himself. Jesus went out to battle alone. Jesus won the victory alone. Jesus collected the spoils himself, and then when he returns, he gives them to his people. People who were his enemies. This is the generosity of Jesus. He gives, gives, gives. In preparation for his ascension, Jesus told the disciples that it was actually good for him to go away. See, in his humility, he had taken on the form of human flesh. He was a mortal being. He only had a body that went this far. He couldn't be in all places at once. 
And so he says, it's best that I go away. That way I can send. That way I can give the comforter, the helper, the one who will come and indwell you, the one who will bring unity to all of you. This is the generosity of Jesus. And we see this most clearly in his death, in his crucifixion on the cross. See, there are layers to the humiliation of Jesus. Looking back at Philippians chapter 2, Paul says, In being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death. See, Jesus did not simply leave his father, be born of a woman, and live this life as a man. He became obedient to death. Down, down, down. There are layers to the humility of Jesus, and Paul goes further. Not just any death, but death on a cross. The prophet Isaiah was stunned and convicted to silence when he stood before the God whose robe filled the temple because he was a man of unclean lips. Seeing God in his exaltation, Isaiah was stunned. And likewise, we too should be stunned, but by something different, by the humility of Jesus, the one who was willing to let himself be disrobed of that robe and crucified by unclean people, by us. The God who had received countless sacrifices and offerings from his people would now give himself as an offering for those people. This is the generosity of Jesus. Matthew 20, verse 28 says, Even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. This is his humility. Why? To give his life as a ransom for many. To give. This is the generosity of Jesus. The one who is humble is also generous. Jesus says, do you, do you want my eternal life? Do you fear death? Do you see death as, a, as a, a domain with many entrances but no exits? Do you want my eternal life? Here, have it. I'll take your death. Do you, do you want my righteousness? Do you desire to stand before God clean? Here, have mine. I'll take your sin. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin. That is the humility of Jesus. Why? So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is his generosity. This is who Jesus is. This is who our shepherd is. You cannot barter with God. You cannot haggle with Jesus. He just gives. He offers. For you are, for by grace you have been saved. By grace, it is a gift of God. Do not reject this Jesus. Do not push away his open hand. What he has for you is his. What he has is yours. Everything he has he gives. He says in Matthew chapter 11, come to me. Come to me. Are you, are you tired of working? Are you weary? Do you, do you feel a burden on you? Come to me. There are no prerequisites, no hoops to jump through. Come to me and I will give. I will not trade. I will not let you buy. I will give. You rest. This is the generosity of our Jesus. This is the Jesus of the Bible, the one who is humble, the one who is generous. This is the head of the church. This is the one whom we follow. This is the one Lord. This is the one that we can trust, that in times like this, we can, we can follow and have no doubt that he will continue to be generous. This is ultimately what we celebrate in communion. The humility and the generosity of Jesus. 
when we, when we take uh, these elements, they are his gift for us, for those of us who are in him. So communion is not something that we observe and we, we, we give out freely. The scriptures teach us that this is something for the church. So we're, we're going to hand out uh, the communion element here in just a moment. If you can't celebrate this morning the humility and the generosity of Jesus on your own behalf, it is okay. In fact, it is right for you to let that pass by. And there be me many reasons why that's the case. Maybe you don't consider yourself a follower of Jesus. Parents, you may want it to pass for your children. You're not certain of their conversion. You may not feel uh, unity with those in the room. You may not feel a trust in the Lord right now, given all that's taken place. It is okay to let this pass. There is not judgment. But if you are able to celebrate with us, take. Give consideration as the song plays to the humility and the generosity of Jesus. And after that song, we'll take those items together. This has been a message from the chapel. Thanks for joining us today. For more information about the chapel or any of our campuses, including Akron, Green, Wadsworth, Kenmore, Cuyahoga Falls, Nordonia, and Medina, please go to our website at thechapel.life.